G.G. Jackson, the youngest prospect in the 2023 draft, has had an up and down season, but he also has tons of potential. This is Floor and Ceiling, let's break him down. The first thing to know about G.G. Jackson is that he should be finishing his senior year of high school right now. Jackson reclassified from 2023 to 2022 and opted to attend South Carolina over UNC. At about 6'10", the 18-year-old brings a really versatile skill set to the table, but it definitely still needs to be ironed out. Let's start then with what Jackson really likes to do though, which is creating his own shot. One of his main go-tos is just getting a screen and using it to get the switch or create space. He loves to operate around the elbows where he can either curl to get the ball or get into an iso. He likes getting to his right side the most, but the high elevation point on Jackson's jumper makes him tough to contest regardless of where he is on the floor. Maybe that's why a huge 38% of Jackson's shots are two-point jumpers. For instance, he's just as comfortable getting into his mid-range J going baseline, we've seen that quite often this season. Or he can also post up and then just shoot over the top despite not playing too physical. Now, Jackson scores about 15 points a game, but his efficiency really is not good. More on that later, but I'm encouraged by things like him shooting the ball the same way most times, his jumper being compact, and in the long term, I believe it will go in. So sure, in a way, he's productive, but Gigi's inefficiency has been astounding this season. There's no way to sugarcoat that, but part of it is his shot selection. Jackson can pull up for seemingly random shots just way too early in the shot clock. Generally speaking, he also isn't aggressive enough. This has been a question mark about Jackson even before college since he's prone to settling for long jumpers a lot and just sort of floating around on the perimeter. Gigi is a 6'10 dynamic athlete, but he doesn't always play like one. You look at his shot diet, volume, efficiency, and usage, and a lot of similar profiles that pop up are really small, six-foot-ish guards. Jackson's effective field goal percentage is 44. His true shooting percentage is 47. Those are terrible figures, which mean that he isn't shooting or scoring well. He also has to do a better job at being more physical against mismatches. For instance, these turnarounds in the post should probably be shots closer to the basket, particularly when Gigi is being guarded by a smaller defender. For an 18-year-old freshman who should still be in high school, Jackson's shot diet is just really difficult and demanding. Keep in mind, he was 17 when the college season started, and of course he was a 5-star prospect, so it's fair that there are high expectations. But Jackson is also playing in a context at South Carolina which hasn't always been ideal on the court. Gigi leads his team in usage by a mile, he's expected to make things happen, and doesn't get a lot of help. For example, he's shooting an abysmal 28% on two-point jumpers. Some of the misses can look really ugly. But he's taken over 160 of these shots, and only 5 of his makes have been assisted. That's why, despite the lack of efficiency, I do think it's worth taking Jackson's more positive flashes into account. Each prospect cannot be evaluated with the same goalposts, situations vary, and Jackson, in my opinion, is in a very specific one. So maybe I'm being optimistic, but I'm very intrigued by these types of makes. Jackson is pulling up from 3 with legit range and showing that he can make these shots. As is the case with his pull up from mid-range, the numbers will need to improve, but maybe not as drastically from 3. Jackson is shooting about 33% from deep, which is not awesome, but it's not bad, especially when you consider his high volume. Jackson has taken 163s, he's made over 50 while showing some ability to at least create his own 3-pointer. In a different situation, GG probably gets easier looks and his percentage gets bumped up a few numbers. Only 67% of his threes have been assisted this season, which on one hand is nice because it shows that self-creation potential but I also think that percentage has to be higher for a really young wing whose efficiency could really be helped by playing off the ball more. For example, I felt like Jackson could have gotten even more easy corner threes. 
There were times in South Carolina's offense where he just spotted up and did nothing. South Carolina is among the worst offenses in college basketball with regards to the draft. So like I've been saying, the on-court fit definitely was not ideal for Gigi. And I think the quality of his shots is bound to improve in the NBA. That being said, similar to his pull-up from 3, Gigi has range with clean mechanics and tidy footwork, plus the fairly quick release. Making these open threes will be important for Jackson so that he's given room and space to attack closeouts. This part of his game is still a work in progress like we're about to dive into, but I think it's going to be important for him down the line in a way that maybe it isn't so much right now because of the shots he's taking at South Carolina. At the rim, Gigi Jackson is an interesting case. What it boils down to is that he should be a lot better here than he is right now. But there are some encouraging flashes, right? Jackson is 6'10", so if he's able to get low and handle the ball, he's gonna be a mismatch once he gets into the paint. Sometimes this idea really pays off, Jackson has a decent first step which is enough to beat most defenders in his position. He also has an interesting combination of flexibility and body control which allows him to explore different angles. For example, you'll see Jackson get results with euro steps, float overs, or step throughs in traffic. If he's driving to the rim, he can do so in a few ways. Jackson can act as the trailer which is an option if he's at the 5. He can be the one bringing the ball up and creating his own offense. He can even slow things down and get into the post. But this is what I'd like to see from him most of the time. An assertive power drive, two feet in the paint, and a strong finish from the 5-star freshman. This season, Jackson hasn't done that enough. Only one-fourth of his shots come at the rim, and then again, Jackson's numbers are flat-out poor. Gigi is converting on 61.5% of his shots at the basket, which is the same as Brandon Miller, whose main knock is his finishing. For me, this finishing at the basket is going to be Jackson's biggest swing skill. Not his mid-range or his three-pointer which he's already at ease with despite the lack of efficiency, but that is what's going to be what pushes Jackson outside of his comfort zone. As with everything else, he's handling the ball and getting to his offense out of range he dribbles. If Jackson is met with bodies in the paint, he will go out of his way to avoid contact, which he is really averse to right now. He's going to have better spacing in the NBA, which hopefully mitigates some of the problem, and he's also not going to be the number one option, at least early on. But I don't think that solves the main issue, which is that he's unable to and unwilling to finish through defenders and over length, which is why he only converts 61.5% of his shots at the rim. Jackson whiffs on more layups than you'd like, sometimes not even touching iron on these misses. His lack of physicality can also show up when he posts up. In the long run, you really want Gigi to improve, because a big part of his appeal is being able to use a ball screen, attack a mismatch on the switch, and then either hit his jumper or get to the rack. The glimpses exist, but the reality is, Jackson is really far away from being efficient enough at either one right now. One of the more interesting and unexplored parts of Gigi Jackson's game is his passing. On paper, it looks rough. He has 26 assists to 84 turnovers, which is far from good, but I kind of think that this is a contextual thing as well. Broadly speaking, I think his turnovers are more so about awareness or spacing. It's also that Gigi's handle is a work in progress still. Clearly, he wants to command a lot of ball handling reps, but the chances are he will have to adjust his role to a more simple one at times. As a note on this, I do think it's unlikely that he would have gotten such a high usage rate in a different context. His play so far this season has shown that, but I also think there were signs in his EYBL team which showed that Jackson was more productive doing other things. Either way, what I'm really focused on is how he's accumulating these turnovers, which can be largely attributed to a handle that is still high and loose, and it can force Jackson to get sped up or lose focus. However, I also feel like Gigi has displayed some playmaking feel at times, not just this season, but throughout his basketball journey. 
For example, the 18 year old can make some reads with his back to the basket. I like this one where Gigi spots the double team coming since he has a smaller guard on him and then whips the pass to his big. Eventually, you'd love to see Gigi demand more of these pick and rolls where he's acting as the ball handler. His pass right here to set up the dunk is a pretty nice read. As a final note on Jackson offensively, it's worth discussing what a different role for him could have looked like. I left this for last because quite frankly, the vast majority of the tape on Jackson this season shows what he is right now, a face-up, ball-handling forward who prefers to operate around the perimeter and take jumpers. In my last video on Leonard Miller, I talked about how his time with the G League Ignite had maximized his efficiency. In doing so, he was shooting really well at the rim, but maybe not fleshing out his entire skill set with ball handling and passing. Jackson is more of a self-creator than Miller, but I think the same notion sort of applies. Like what if he was more of a play finisher, being set up instead of having to carry such a huge offensive load. Also, he could be used more as a roller when he screens, rather than him just popping out to the perimeter to face up or get into an iso. Defensively, it's tough to gauge where Gigi Jackson is at. Like many prospects, he has the tools and they've shown up at times, but not often enough. Starting with the positive flashes, this is what Gigi's defense will ideally look like. I'm interested in seeing his official measurements to see how long he actually is, but Jackson has the means to be a threat as the low man. With his mobility and pop, if he stays engaged, he can definitely rack up some blocks. Those same tools, again, exist for him to be capable in space, but this hasn't really shown up either. Should Gigi rev up his motor, lock in, get down in a stance, and work hard to keep attackers in front of him, then I think he definitely has what it takes to be a multi-positional defender in the NBA. As I said, it's his combination of how Jackson moves around the floor and how he can use his physical tools. You can see that in a play like this, where Gigi reads the cut, flies into the passing lane, and gets the steal. For the most part though, Jackson has really been a non-factor on defense this season. When combined with his inefficiency on offense, that's just not good, and it's really led to some frustration from South Carolina fans with Jackson's effort on this side of the floor. Questions about his motor definitely exist. For example, on this play, he completely falls asleep off the ball. Or again here, it doesn't end up counting, thankfully for him, but he's ball watching and he concedes the offensive board. In this clip, Jackson doesn't pick anyone up in transition, so when Florida eventually attacks the rim, his feet are not set and he can't really do anything. Far too often, Gigi is caught upright or flat-footed. He doesn't do anything to deter drives or get stops. Jackson is prone to giving up middle really easily, and it's not like South Carolina had rim protectors in the paint to justify how easily Gigi got beat off the dribble quite often. Then on top of that, his positional versatility on defense is theoretical in just that. Right now, I'm not sure who Jackson guards in the NBA other than maybe the spot-up corner shooter who barely gets touches. Teams, even at the college level, know that they're going to get good looks most of the time if they put GG in pick and roll action. He's not sure how to navigate that at all, and he's going to need so much development on this side of the floor overall when he gets to the NBA. Patience is a virtue. As a prospect, GG Jackson probably embodies that better than anybody else in this draft. But I think his upside, if it hits, is massive, and his potential is mouthwatering, even if there are plenty of questions to figure out along the way. Basically, I think the case around GG Jackson revolves around his offensive versatility, his age being born in December 2004, the self-creation flashes, the passing flashes, the pull-ups, all of that. He's really got to get better at being efficient in a bad, bad way. He's got to improve as a finisher at the rim, which I think is his swing skill. And then he's got to figure it out really in general defensively. But I think he's still young enough to do so and still moldable enough to really sort of make him into your picture of what Gigi Jackson should be. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and comment. Tell me what you think of Gigi Jackson. And as always, make sure to subscribe. Take care and I'll catch you guys next time.